one of the most powerful features of Active Roles is our workflow engine. With a workflow, anything that Active Roles does or anything somebody does inside of Active Roles can trigger a workflow and can trigger something else to happen. Let's take a probably pretty common workflow scenario that you have. You have some groups in your company that are really, really sensitive in terms of who has access to them. Maybe they give access to financial information, something along those lines. The problem is people call the help desk and say, I want to be added to that group. The help desk has to decide, well, gosh, should I do it? I don't know. Sometimes they get confused. They add them anyway. That's a problem. With active roles, we can tell it, you know what? The help desk can add them to that group. And as soon as they do, it's going to fire an email off and send that email to the owner of that group and force them to approve or disapprove that person being added to the group. That's a workflow. And let's take a quick look at what that exact workflow looks like. Here I'm opening up a workflow. And this particular workflow, like I said, will, do, will require approval of the owner of a, of a group uh, or distribution list before somebody can be added to it. What you can see here is that I have an approval rule. The way you think about a workflow is here's the start of it. Up here we have what triggers the workflow. And what you can see, if I click here, is that any user who changes the group membership of a group whose approval by primary owner workflow required is equal to true would trigger this workflow. That is a virtual attribute that we have set that says, it's a checkbox, it's a binary value that says if the owner of the group is required to approve it, then that attribute is set to true. So in other words, if somebody changes the membership of a group and that attribute is set to true down here, it's going to fire this workflow. And you can see, that's the beginning of the workflow. Here I have the actual approval rule itself, and I won't dig into this, but the bottom line is the approver, in fact, is the, is the manager of the group. What I call this line here is this is when it's going to actually execute it. So the bottom line is here we have the approval. If the approval is approved, then we're going to do the operation and then end. If the approval is not approved, it's just going to fail out and stop what it's doing. That's an example of a very simple workflow. Let's take a look at another one. Earlier we looked at a policy that uh, set prepended the word group underscore to every single group that we create. Just to iterate the point that in active roles there are multiple ways of doing things, I created a workflow that does the exact same thing. Again, here we can see what's going to fire it. If we need to create a group, the filtering conditions are what they are. We're going to modify the requested change here and then execute it. And the modification is we're going to add group underscore to the beginning of, of the name of that particular object. One thing to note is that though we've been looked at some pretty simple workflows, they can get much more complex. And let's take a look. And here's a good example of one. This particular workflow will move computer objects around Active Directory depending on what location they are. So you can see if the location of the computer object is DC, I want to move it to the OU DC. And then end. if it's LA, I want to move it to LA. There are other ways of doing this, simpler ways of doing it, but I use this particular one just to show you how I can put a bunch of if-thens and things like that into those workflows so that we can do different things. And incidentally, if you want to do something we don't have built in, we can just run a script. So if I had to do something very complicated here, I could just drag this over here, run a PowerShell script, and do whatever I want inside of Active Roles. So what you can see here is how powerful and granular we can get in terms of all the different things we can do with workflows. I see customers all the time that have workflows with tons of steps in them, doing different things, running scripts over here, provisioning an account over there, whatever they need to do. This really becomes the, the workhorse of what makes things actually happen inside of active roles. And because I can call these at any point, if this happens, if that happens, if somebody changes the name of a group on a Tuesday, then I want to fire this workflow. Anything we want to do, we can use to fire a workflow and do whatever we need to do. So you can see workflows are an extremely powerful way of getting things done in Active Directory that you can't do any other way except through, through Active Roles.